The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Hello and welcome to another episode on Gen XYZ. This is a platform where we talk about contemporary topics or issues based on the youth. Now, I just had a fun ride on a go-kart and I'm here today at the Sri Lanka Karting Circuit and it's known to be one of the finest in Asia and also one of the world's best. Now, this was constructed in 2013 with the guidance of uh, Mr. David Pires and also for young enthusiasts who want to start their career in racing, this is the place that you need to start. It's not just for racers, but if you want a leisure activity, if you want to have that feeling of a racer, this is the place where you can come and have some fun. Now today, on the show, I wanted to talk about the popularity of motorsporting. Because you know, these days the F1 season is right in the middle and you know, people are on their feet watching their races and there are young people out there who want to get into this career as well. So to talk about this topic, we have the ideal guest, who is Mr. Dilanta Malagamwa, who is the ideal idol for motor racing in Sri Lanka. Mr. Dilanta, thank you so much for joining me on the program today. Now, we don't need an introduction for you because people know who you are and you have been an idol for all the young racers out there, and especially to Sri Lanka. And he is an international racer and also a member of the sports ministry as well, sports council. Uh, not anymore. <laughs> uh, not anymore, <laughs> former. Yeah, All on. right. Okay, Mr. Dilantha, to start off with, tell me what's going on with you lately uh, and what have you been up to? Yeah, uh, actually this year I'm racing in the um, uh, European GT2 Championship, but unfortunately I could only do the first race and I missed two races. So, because one thing is finding sponsors and then uh, our rupee is so much of devalued, so it's it's a bit difficult for me to uh, continue. So, but uh, hopefully we'll be starting very soon, and then uh, actually there's another race this month, but I won't be able to compete in that. But I'm planning to do the World Championship. It's called the uh, Olympics of Motorsports, which will be held in France next month from 26th to the 30th. So we have got an invitation for me to come and race, represent the country. So it's not between the teams, it's between the countries. So right. next race will be in France. That's amazing. And I wish you all the very best Thank for you. that also. And you have been, you know, having that name for Sri Lanka for so long. Yeah. Now to start off our discussion, Mr. Dilantha, I want to talk about the popularity of motorsporting in Sri Lanka. Now, earlier it was not very popular, but it's building up its popularity now with the coming days. But then. I feel after the COVID pandemic hit, like people stopped joining and you know, the races were not able to commence here in Sri Lanka. So what do you feel about the evolution of the popularity throughout the years? Honestly, it was always popular because uh, I think motorsports started, the first race I heard was in 1904. And then I think it was very um, active from 1934. So we are pioneering in Asia also uh, in the world. But if you see, uh, I mean, even in my younger days, earlier days, motorsports was one of the most popular sports in, uh, in Sri Lanka and it even got more popular. And uh, so there's no uh, argument about that, it's very popular. And if you see the TV uh, viewership uh, next to uh, uh, cricket, it's motorsports. And so they have, it's not me, some company has done, a, uh, I mean, a research and they found that. And I honestly think it's like, if you see here or if you go to any circuit in, in Sri Lanka when there's a race, I think there is more spectators than uh, cricket, uh, even in a small circuit. So I wouldn't say that it was not popular and popular, but it's always been popular. 
All right. So what can you say about the availability of this talent here in Sri Lanka? Do you see a lot of people who are interested in joining racing and the young people who are enthusiastic of doing so? Over the years, have you seen, what have you seen about, you know, the joining and the declining of the people in this industry? At least, actually, it's increasing and the events has been increasing days that I started and now there's so much of increasement. So. Uh, sometimes for a day, I mean like in Sri Lanka what happens is they run the motorcycles and cars on the same day. Uh, but in other countries, I mean it's for four wheels different, I mean it's not on the same day, two wheels and four wheels together. But we have, have at least sometimes have 600 entrants in one event. So uh, it's increasing but uh, the problem what has happened up to now was there was no, I mean like the days that we started, uh, the uh, I would say, uh, I mean we didn't have the proper uh, Facilities? facilities or tools for it, you know, so only place we could can practice was uh, Katukurun and that's not a proper interest, it's a, it's a air, um, I mean, the, uh, it's air field. And I think uh, we should, I always I say that we should take our hats off to Mr. David Pedis because, uh, I mean, if you see all the best drivers, they start with go-karts and he has built one of the best circuits in the world and I think one of the best in Asia. So now, I mean, for a beginner, um, I think um, they have the best place here, I mean, um, uh, to start with, I mean, for cars. For motorcycles, of course, still we don't have a proper circuit. I think um, uh, in the near future, I'm planning to build one. And um, so, uh, I think this has been here for many years. So, I think if where there's interest, they could. But the problem is, uh, motorsports is very expensive. So, unless you have a very That's wealthy right. father, <laughs> or you have yourself, or someone like me who, who will explore, go to some other countries, work about 22 hours a day to fulfill your dream. So, it's how it is. Did you say, sir, that you're planning on building a track yourself? Yes, yes, we are planning. I mean, I had the plan for about last two years, mm -hmm. but uh, due to COVID and other things, uh, we couldn't do it. But, I mean, in the near future, maybe within a, a year or two, we will have an international circuit here. How have you seen now Sri Lanka has gone through, you know, so many crises now, starting off with the COVID pandemic. Uh, has it affected this industry in any way? Now, especially, I'm pretty sure the economic crisis is yeah. play, taking a toll yeah. on this industry. In Sri Lanka, yes, because I think the biggest problem is the fuel. So mm -hmm. I don't think, uh, I mean, they are supposed to have a race, I don't think. They, and then during COVID, they couldn't do it because the, the spectators was not allowed to come. But I think still they had few races. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, if if not for the full crisis, I think from next year they'll start having some race. I, I heard that they're going to have an event in December and then they'll continue. I think uh, um, they should allow the motorsports to have, I mean, to f have the races because fuel is a crisis. But then I think we burn more fuel on roads. You know, so. <laughs> That's right. right. Uh, now talking about, you know, the engagement into this racing sport. Yeah. Now, I believe that young people should join at a very young age. Yes. Is that true? Yes, I think uh, if you see overseas, they start around three years. So now we have the facility. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think if there's enthusiasts and I mean, who has a passion for it and who has a commitment, um, I think we can build a lot of good talent in Sri Lanka. I mean, very thankful to this circuit. Uh, do you think like, I've seen abroad as well, People, young children, start as young as the age of six. Three. Is that three? three right. Is that necessary? Yeah, of course, because you get so used to it, you know, and then your whole body is with this, you know. So you know how it handles, you know, from the small age when you start driving. Because if you see a go kart, there's no suspension, so you feel everything to yourself. Not like driving a, a car with suspension. So you feel everything. So when you start and we do it every day. It's totally different, so it's it's one of the best things. So, to would do. you say that it's sort of a lifestyle that you have to commit into? Yeah, of course, and then you learn so much because the more you get into a car and do more miles, then you know more about it. Right. Um, now, starting about the you know the first steps that anybody should take in order to join this industry. Yeah. What's the first thing that they should do? I mean, for cars, if you want to become a four-wheel drive, I mean, anything to race with four wheels, I think go kart is the best thing. I mean, it's the, it's the best thing, so they can start with that. But for bikes, you know, like kids, they can start with uh, motocross, you know, autocross or motocross. And in Sri Lanka, there are kids starting from five with this motocross bike. So we have the facility. Is there a difficulty in getting into this industry? There is not depending on, I mean, like, as I said, this, it, 
the whole thing depends on the money you have because unfortunately in Sri Lanka for motorsports we don't have sponsors and they don't understand how much popularity you can bring through motorsports you know because motorsports is just not a sport it's a big huge industry yeah. and millions of millions money spent and you can gain all out of it you know so once a person who understands that um, I'm sure they will start sponsoring because uh, the TV coverage yeah, I mean uh, if you see other sports only few countries play you know but motorsports it's I mean they compete all over the world and the top the most I mean the best companies um, and they, as I told you, the industry, because it's not like they have the tires, you get the oils, you get the fuel, you get the engines, you get the suspensions, and all the best brands in the world is competing with each other, because this is the most glamorous sport in the world, I think, soccer and motorsports. So that's huge potential. I mean, I mean even to bring in uh, uh, tourism to Sri Lanka, I think that this is one of the best things, because all the rich people are doing it, you know. So uh, during a weekend of an international race, I think at least... 10, 15 million dollars is spent. Right. So imagine if we have that in Sri Lanka, at least out of that we get 10 percent, you know. So it's huge. Just to have an insight about, you know, the racing world here in Sri Lanka and in the world. Now, when I talk about racing, I think about go-karting, I think about rally racing, I think about Formula One. What are the other types of racing? Actually, um, so Formula One is single-seater, it's the pinnacle, so that's the best. But then you get uh, the saloon cars, you get like rally cars then saloon cars then you get the gt cars so there's so many you know so um, in if you see in uh, formula one then below that is gp2 then you get formula three formula four um, then formula toyota or others formula four single seater so there's a lot i mean each country has their own championship but if you take cars it's the same thing like you get a saloon car then you get the gt car so you get gt4 gt3 so so each one is different so single, I mean single seaters, it's, I mean, you get a lot of downforce, so, and it's, I mean, it's easier to handle, but when you take a GT car, there's not that kind of downforce, so it's more difficult to drive, and there's, uh, in GT cars, there's a thing called BOP, it's called balance of performance, so almost everything is same, but if you see in Formula 1, after two, three laps, it's a huge gap between the first and the last, because, the money spent on each team is totally different, so you can't compete. But uh, in GT and saloon cars, it's more close. The racing is very close. It mostly depends on the driver. Uh, which form of racing is mostly popular here in Sri Lanka? I think Sri Lanka is the GT. I mean, the saloon cars and the that thing called uh, Sri Lanka uh, GT Championship, SLGT. So that's the most popular because it's like related to anyone. You know, it's I mean, you can have the same car on road. You can never have a formula or a go-kart on the road, but if you say like a Porsche or a Lamborghini or Ferrari, whatever, um, they have to build the road car into a race car. Mm -hmm. So you can, um, I mean, uh, so it's almost there. So like the engine is almost same, but the suspension brakes different. But if you see the structure of the car, it's the same thing. So you can relate it, but uh, Formula 1 or Formula 3, you can't be driving on a road. Yeah, that's true. So people have more affection to GT cars, because if you see like the endurance races, it's huge. It's, I mean, even our GT races, it's fully crowded because you can relate it. You know, I have the same car, I drive it on road and I have a collection. So, so here it's also the same. The GT cars are the most popular and overseas Formula is it's a circus, you know, like it's spent so much money and the media coverage and so it's different. But then all the other racing, it's got, they're so popular. Do you think because of the popularity of F1, the, the attention given to other forms of racing have decreased? It's never decreased. I mean, that's why people don't understand here. Uh, it's not decreased, like all the GT races, the endurance races, it's full of spectators and get, it gets so much of pop. I mean, if you see like Lumaon or if you see Nürburgring or even if you see uh, other 24 hours, De Daytona and things like that, they, they're very popular and like people come and have tents and they stay there for three days, you know, until this, uh, because it's a 24 hour race. So they're very popular and so there's no such thing, you know. All right, Mr. Dilanta. So I want to continue this discussion, but before that, let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ.
Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we are in discussion with Dilan Tamalagamo, the international racer and we are at the Sri Lanka karting circuit in Bandaragama. Mr. Dilanta, now we had this discussion about the popularity of motorsports here in Sri Lanka. Can you tell me about now when people want to join this sport, they think, oh, okay, I need to have the money to do this. I need to have the interest in doing this. But also what's the pathway I have here in Sri Lanka? And they don't actually think about it as a lifestyle. Now you have gone through this through thick and thin and you've faced so many obstacles. What are the challenges that one person can face if they join this field? I mean, uh, compared to every other sport, there's a big challenge. But, uh, you know, uh, motorsports is very intense, you know, like uh, you might have a lot of bad injuries. So you have to be very fit, you know, physically you have to be fit. I mean, every other sport is the same. But if you see in motorsports, from the time you start and until you finish the race, so you, you don't even miss one thousandth of a second. There's no time even, I mean, you know how it is. So no time to relax, stop, look around, nothing. You are, you're always focused and you're, you might be racing around 280, 290 kilometers per hour. So your mindset has to be, I mean, physically also, also your mindset has to be very strong. So, but I think when you start from very early days, you get used to it and you, you'll be in it, you know. So, I mean, like I said, because of this circuit now, people, I mean, if there's youngsters who won't start, they can become um, the best drivers in the world. But uh, also, uh, I think when they're very early ages, they need support from the parents because uh, financial uh, support. So, I mean, um, I don't think, uh, so when they're, I mean, elder, I mean, when they're about 20, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, maybe you can have your own money. But if you start very early, then the sponsors will pick you up. So, but if you are in that level, so until then you have to, until your parents pay for you, you have to build your career and get a name there. Then you might find the sponsors. What if at the age, at age of three or six, like children are not able to understand what they really want. But when they grow up, just like you, like you figured out that you wanted to do racing and will it be difficult for them to join this industry at that age? No, it's not an issue at all. It's all your commitment because age doesn't matter, nothing matters, your interest matters and your commitment. And I still think they might have a upper hand who starts earlier, but then you can catch up like I did, you know. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So, so what was your inspiration to become a racer? Actually, when I was 14 years, I saw a Hollywood movie called uh, Silver Dream Racer. That inspired me to become a champion, a world champion. I, uh, my intention was not, not to win in Sri Lanka, but I wanted to go beyond you know and then become a world champion and definitely you have reached that height <laughs> as well and i congratulate on you. you and sri lanka is definitely proud of you for that uh what can you say now about the country sir like what support has sri lanka given in order to build this motorsporting industry up i think it's uh, <laughs> the country i don't know what they have done for the motorsports but it's it's i honestly say that it's because of the competitors here that we just build the industry not the organizers or anyone, because as I told you, in 1904, we started and from 1934, we were very active. But up to date, we don't have even a proper circuit in Sri Lanka. So you can imagine, I mean, the people in the hierarchies, why they didn't do it. And in Asia, we were the pioneers. And now if you see in Asia, every country has a proper circuit. Japan has about nine. Um, like if you see, uh, Malaysia has few and then Indonesia, Thailand, Korea, um, um, uh, if, yeah, so, I mean, if you see that, but even in India, um, they all have the circuits, but we couldn't still build a proper circuit. So, can you imagine what support has uh, uh, been given to motorsports? Do you think that Sri Lanka will be able to develop uh, this industry in any time in the future? Actually, yeah, why not? That I think the main thing for Sri Lanka is we need an international circuit and I told you I will build it within the next two years. So once it's there, you'll see the difference, amount of international races coming in, the amount of spectators, the foreigners coming in, the amount of money that can be involved, you know. It's a huge industry. I mean, um, as I told you, because it's, if you compare the other sports, it's, I, I mean, the involvement is very less, you know. You might have a bat, you have a ball, you might have the pads and, you know, a few things. Uh, but uh, even in soccer or rugby, if you see the things, you know. But in racing, it's so, it's a big industry and so huge money, you know, the world's wealthiest and the most, uh, I mean, the strongest uh, manufacturers, they all compete to show that they are the best. So they spend so much of money. So, um, 
and in and in, when it comes to like uh, it's not representing the country you know it's representing a team uh, or a manufacturer and then only during once a year we have the world championships but i think in other sports is you're just representing the country so this is different you know and the amount of money as i told you they spend so much money on r and d because Ka khan is so many things so it's a big industry so that can bring so much of huge i mean foreign investment and foreign currency and earnings to sri lanka and then you know the drivers they love the beaches and after a the race they will spend at least four to five days uh, cruising around or spending so after a race they'll spend so much of money and time in sri lanka as i told you it'll be one of the best tourist attractions in sri lanka now sir mr dilanta you've been an idol to this racing industry you have been racing for sri lanka representing sri lanka a lot uh, I want you to tell me a little bit about your achievements and what you have done for the country as well. But now here, the talent here in Sri Lanka, they are thinking that, you know, they don't have a pathway here, they don't have the facilities here. So they tend to go abroad to find their pathway, thinking that, you know, other countries are giving more prominence to racing. What disadvantage do you think there? Because I feel we are facing a loss because our young racers are going abroad holding up their country flag and representing their country but we know for a fact that that was our talent here exactly what can you tell about the brain drain yeah because the first thing is we don't have a proper circuit but forget about the proper circuit we have like uh, katakurun and few other races but we have to run the international standards in sri lanka so now we have our own uh, uh, categories or different categories in racing which is not even equivalent to those countries so we have to adapt those like say if it's like the SLGT so it has to be something like uh, comparing to other country either uh, the FIA or the TCR which is two liter and you have to have the same standards of the cars here and you have to the sports ministry should allow our I mean this competition to bring their own car without tax and they should have those uh, I mean the standards of cars has to be same as uh, international because if you just drive a car here which is a road car with some roll bars and you know it's not to that standards and then if you go overseas you lose a lot of things you know but even from this uh, early stages if we can I used to tell this to the organizers the federation always we should have either we should have one make races so everyone is equal like I said the BOP so that um, will uh, I mean encourage people and then they'll, they'll give uh, more uh, uh, confidence you know so we have to do that we are just running something that is not anywhere in the world and our cars are all over 15 20 years that they race now Right. So we have to go, I mean, I mean, uh, we have to develop ourselves. So for that, I think the Ministry of Sports and the Federation has to get together and develop it. And I've been telling this for many, many years and it's not still happening. And before we go further into the discussion, I think we should go into a short commercial break because I think the weather is not at our favour at the moment. We'll be right back. You're watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and I think the weather has seized off a little bit and we can continue with our discussion and we are in discussion with uh, Dilanta Malagamu, the international racer and I think uh, sir before we left off we were talking about you know the popularity of motorsports here in Sri Lanka and the challenges we are facing and the young racers are facing because they can't actually identify a pathway here in our country. So you as a racer and you've been through this through thick and thin what do you think the country can do as a whole in order to make this popular, to give priority to motorsporting? I think it's sports ministry, the federation and the media. So, and then all the sponsors, you know, they have to find out what popularity... Because I think even the sponsors, uh, they lack to sponsor because I think there's no much media coverage. So I think the media has a lot to do. And then the sports ministry and the federation, they all have to get together and uh, support it. Do you think now, as you said, uh, a lot of uh, money and investment is involved in, you know, bringing this industry up. Do you think Sri Lanka has the capacity to do so? <laughs> 
Sri Lanka has the capacity to do all the wrong things. Why don't they have the capacity to do a good thing? You know, I'm sure they, it's not that kind of money that has to be invested. Uh, can, I mean, there will be investors, but I mean, um, administration plus the priority given to them and um, the permissions that has to be get, got. I mean, like, see, if you have a international racing track, the biggest thing is because people bring their vehicles from overseas and the equipment for the races. So it has to be bonded. So they don't have to pay tax, they bring it and then take it off. So those facilities that can be, uh, I mean, implement by the government. So I think uh, Federation, Sports Ministry and the government together, they can love it. And there'll be a lot of people to invest, not in Sri Lanka, there'll be foreigners who will come and invest if you have a proper circuit. How, now being an international racer, if you want to get into this field, how can you identify these sponsors? How can you publicize yourself? Uh, what are the steps that you need to take in order to come up to your level? Yeah, okay. So the main thing is, as I told you, because the sponsors will pay for advertisement, you know. So, but in a car, you get a lot of space because you can get in your racing suit plus in a car and you'll be having one of the world's best uh, uh, productions so like see the best brands like uh, I'm raising the Lamborghini so having your uh, uh, the company or whatever you want to give publicity is on a Lamborghini I mean that itself and even our I mean the least race that we have is about 50 minutes so 50 minutes you get international coverage and the same thing I mean it's on the stream live stream so from any part of the world you can watch so you get so much of publicity so a person who understands that for I mean they will definitely sponsor so we have to see that in Sri Lanka we get the same publicity through media and other uh, um, I mean soft copies or hard whatever you know so um, then that as I said so media can do a big part in this you know and then once it's so uh, they know that we get a lot of publicity they will pay for it and another thing, a major concern that, you know, people and especially parents are worried about is, you know, the safety and the risk that the young people are taking in order to join this sport. Because they feel, you know, oh my gosh, racing is a very risky job. It's life-threatening sometimes. What can you say about that? Is it really life-threatening and <laughs> is it something that you need to uh, be brave to do? Yeah, you got to be brave to push the pedal <laughs> but I think uh, safety wise I think it's safer than going on the road you know if you see I'm mean, especially in Sri Lanka because um, you get all the safety equipment you get the roll bars you get the seat belts uh, hands devices helmets so I think the percentage is less compared to driving a car on the road you're more safer at a track and then you know like even if you have accidents there are ambulances I mean there's medical uh, um, attendance so and you get even a helicopter at the circuit so um, I think compared to in a normal life it's I think it's safer will you be able to share uh, an incident that you faced like that yeah actually I've killed myself about three four times you know when I was riding but uh, driving like I had crashes at 20, 280 kilometers per hour 270 kilometers per hour touch with uh, I was okay but some drivers I mean had uh, fatal accidents you know but uh, and but like if you compare the percentage is very less but I have had I mean I have broken all my joints when I was riding and driving there was only bruises and you know like dislocations and things like that uh, but other than that I'm okay <laughs> <laughs> that's right uh, haven't you ever felt scared to do this again like after facing one obstacle weren't you afraid to get back on the racetrack again Never. <laughs> it's amazing. How did you get that courage? Because not everyone has that because they have this post-traumatic uh, incidents in their brains. Yeah, I mean, um, so... Uh, have you so, ever taken a break? No, I have never think. taken a break. Actually, I had a big uh, motorcycle accident uh, in Sri Lanka while I was testing and those days I was... Uh, so, I, like, so I had a big crash and I was unconscious for about a week. And then in another week, I had to attend a race in, uh, in the Porsche Carrera Cup. So I was asked not to do it because, I mean, um, the brains are damaged the gel. So it was like when I wake up in the morning, I cannot walk straight. So I was asked not to do it, uh, but I, I felt it was fine. And then I did it and yeah, and we, I think I was placed third or something. And there's so many occasions as such, but as I told you, it's all of a mental, how you think about it, you know. And if you have the courage and intention to do it, um, nothing stops you, you know. That's amazing. I think you have to be really brave in order to get back into a racetrack after coming into a life and death situation like that. Uh, 
so what can you tell about you know the emergence of uh, e-racing sports you know video games and everything have been emerging so much and they have there are competitions for that as well uh, do you think that that has got to play a role in the popularity of uh, motor racing as well of course yes because as i told you because if you physically want to race a car it costs so much money but now i think so anyone who has a uh, device can go and um, I mean they can compete so I think that's really good and it has brought a lot of uh, publicity and now the manufacturers are also supporting the esports so even Lamborghini has their teams and uh, so it's it's really good because you see end of the day uh, if someone really wants to race and he, if he doesn't have the finance and all that but still if he has a device he can still go and race and win you know so end of the day it's, you do all this for your self satisfaction not I mean some do for I think most do for your self satisfaction and some do it for other purposes but I think if you think about it even a small boy who has a device and he to self for his self satisfaction he can do it and win and then you got chances to win there's no obstacle because it's just your I mean if you physically raise you need so much of money tires cars and things like that so you might have sometimes uh, uh, you might not have the upper hand if you don't have the proper financing uh, but like these things, you know, you don't need your uh, talent and your commitment, and they can do it. What can you comment about the popularity of e-sporting here in Sri Lanka? I think it's getting very popular, and I, I think CMSC has uh, organized a championship, and now being in Sri Lanka, you can compete with other countries, you Definitely. know. So it's getting very popular. I've seen it's getting. I think for the last uh, one or two years, it's getting very popular now. Okay, and about the talent in Sri Lanka that we have, have you come across uh, talented individuals, young people who want to join this sport and what can you say about the availability of racers here in Sri Lanka? I mean, I was born here, you know, and I started with all the difficult time. I'm sure we have the talent. There's a lot of talent here, but then, the, I mean, um, the grassroots now we have here, you know, so the initial, uh, initially if we can brainstorm them and, you know, uh, give them a good training. I think we can uh, build Formula One drivers or the world best drivers. I'm sure, you know, the Sri Lankans. They are not. Uh, I mean, like not any discrimination in other countries. But we we never give up, you know. And then um, we have the courage to do it in any sport. What we do with the least facilities, we have still won the world, you know. Uh, so I think we have talent. Do you think motor racing is the sport that needs the most amount of facilities and investment? Yes. Uh, Unarguably, I think that's uh, that's the case. The most expensive sport in the world, uh, so I you need to have the finances in yes. order to. Because yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, um, I mean, if you want to race, um, sometimes you know, say during a weekend of races, you need uh, you can use five to six set of tires, including your testing. Like when you don't have the money, even your testing has to do with a used set of tires. So you don't get the real feeling to set up the tire suspension for the uh, new tires. So you lack these things, you know, when you don't have the proper financing. But still, if you have the commitment and um, the courage, you can still win. <laughs> All right. So with that, uh, we'll go into a short commercial break. You're watching Gen XYZ and we will be back soon. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we are in discussion with Dilantha Malagamu who is the international racer and we are at the Sri Lanka karting circuit in Bandaragama. Now to continue with our discussion sir, now racing is very an intense sport. You need to make a lot of decisions you know within a shorter period of time and especially when you're moving at 300 kilometers an hour. So how do you do that? How do you make such quick decisions and do you need to have like a strong intuition to do that? Yes, you got to because you're like you said, 200 to 300 kilometers per hour. Then um, you know the thing is inside a race car because especially the GT cars, it's covered. You know, so there's no AC, and no wind, no blowers. So and then the temperature goes up to about 60 to 65 degrees during uh, summer, or at least even winter, it's about 50. So uh, uh, the thing is when you're driving, so 
while driving you have to see your dashboard so you have to see like uh, the oil temperatures water temperatures whatever sometimes and then you also talk to your pit because they sometimes ask you things and uh, you have to give them feedback and also they give you information about what's happening in the front or back so you have to listen to that also and also uh, you have to do your calculation when i'm going to overtake him when i'm going to uh, how I'm going to keep up with the guys who are coming behind, not let them overtake you. So all this calculation also has to go in. And then, um, uh, uh, I mean, your traction control, your ABS, you have to adjust all that. So this is all when you're doing uh, those high speeds, you know. So and then, so you get to, you got to get used to it. And I think the most important thing is the mathematics. How I win, like um, even with the younger drivers, I can win is, I do my mathematics while driving, so, and I look at my lap times, and also in the lap times you have to watch because you can see um, plus minus, you know, so you can see, um, so if you are going slow, you have to see how you are going to go fast, and you have to do your mathematics, he is going at that speed, and he's braking there, so how am I going to outbreak him, so these things, so while doing that speed, as I told you before, 50 minutes of racing, the least, you know, then we have the three hour races, six hour races, the endurance, but you got to do all this, with that heat, with all your racing suits and helmets and underwear and all that, you got to do all that. So when you're perfect, then you can win. Well, that's amazing. So <laughs> from the very young age, do you get the training to uh, for your mindset to think in that way? Actually, you know, I, I told you I started at 16. You know, my parents were against my racing. So I did my first race in Katakurunda on a bike at 16. And I won the race. I rode with the bike from Kurunagar to Katakurunda and I won the race. So I think what... Um, um, the biggest advantage I have, I have is my mindset, you know. So I always want to win and I think when I'm, before the race starts, I want the race. So if you think of winning the race during the race, I think you're a little bit too late. So it's your mindset. I think uh, in any sport, it's, uh, you've been consistent, see, and all your mindset, how, how you're um, uh, positive about it, you know. So, and if you just feel that, no, I'm going to lose this race, definitely you will race. Your impression, your um, facial, you know, it's very important with the other drivers. When they see me, they are a little bit scared because I'm always smiling, you know, and they think that I have some advantage. So if you have a, uh, you know, uh, a negative face, then it's easy for them to beat us. And it's definitely getting your head in the game. Yes. Now, when getting into the sports, uh, what knowledge do you need to have before coming into the sport? Actually, when I started, I didn't have the knowledge. But nowadays, you know the technology so much, you can learn a lot of things. But you need to know about the car, the mechanism of the car, especially the suspension. Because, see, now, uh, when I drive, I have to give a feedback to the mechanics to say how I want the, how does the car handle, does it oversteer, does it understeer, do you need more bump, you need more rebump, um, does the car roll. So you have to give all these um, feedback to the mechanics, you know. So some drivers know it very well, some doesn't know, but I think knowing it will give, you will have upper hand in it, you know. So because to set up the car, because uh, when the race starts, you know, the tires are fresh and but after a while it will start sliding. So even the tire pressure is very important. So you have to tell uh, when you're testing, that's why you need testing. So you work with the mechanics. So uh, you have to know the same language. I mean, what you're talking about, you know, so the technical part is very important. So not just, you know, the technicality of racing and the talent to do so, but you need to have the mechanical knowledge as exactly, well. Exactly, yes. How did you, how do you prepare yourself before a race? And do you do a lot of practice? Do you, uh, how do you prepare, like you mentally know, and physically? <laughs> Uh, you know, as, as I told you, it's so much expensive even to test a car. So like people in Europe, they like test every weekend because they have so much of funds and they have the circuits. But unfortunately, we don't have a circuit here. Uh, one thing is because we don't have a circuit and we are not allowed to bring our race cars here to do even testing, even at Katakorinda. But so what I do is I uh, simulate most of the time. Sometimes I use a simulator, but before the race day, all that I do simulation uh, inside. <laughs> and then as I told you, so I'm prepared mentally uh, before the race starts. So I think that was one of my uh, advantages compared to other drivers. I was always mentally very strong and I had the feeling that I'm going to win the race. So before the race starts, I have won the race. Uh, sometimes it doesn't happen, but I uh, imagine and I, I uh, decide that I won the race. So then it's easier than Has thinking it? that you are a loser. 
Has it ever gone your way? Now, before the race, I you told that you're meditating and thinking that the race should go in this manner. Yeah. Has it ever occurred to you that it has not gone that way? Uh, no, it has always been. It's, it's how you think. It's, it's like law of attraction, you know. You decide and you believe in things and you dream about it and it happens. And then you work towards it. It's not that it just happens automatically, but then you work towards winning it because you're mentally, you're so much um, uh, positive about it. Sometimes you get like unexpected, someone comes and knocks you off, you know, and you get a burst tie or something like that. But if not for that, I've always won. That's amazing. <laughs> so what advice can you give to the youngsters who are joining this career, uh, becoming a racer? What can you tell them? What should they do at first? I think first you have to mentally be very strong and, uh, you know, because as I told you, we don't have the facilities here. It's a, it's a huge risk and um, as I told you, I, start, I worked like 22 hours a day to become a race when I went to Japan, you know, and I like, lived in a van and it was very difficult, but I never felt it's difficult or sad or boring or whatever because my, uh, my thought always was to win and become a world champion. So I never thought about the obstacles and the bad part of it. I was only thinking about the uh, good things about it. So I think everyone, because I've seen there's good talent all over the world, but then they don't have that mentality, being positive and winning. And I didn't have anyone to go and demand, you know, but if you see, like, if you take the young, they will go and demand and they will put the blame on someone else. I didn't have anyone to do that. I couldn't put a blame on anyone else. I was doing it all alone. And I couldn't go and demand anyone because there's no one to give me what I wanted. So it was all myself. So then you become very strong, you know. So I think if you can become a person like that, that will help you. Wow, that's amazing. And I think we are reaching the final minutes of our program as well. Would you like to share a little bit about your experience, the moment that you remember the most in your uh, racing career or something very challenging that happened to you? <laughs> I think the most challenging was my first race going to India, taking my bike from Kurunagal by train to Thaleman and taking it uh, by a ferry to Rameshwaram, going for my first international race. That was exciting, but I think... Uh, uh, in, when I became third in the world championship, uh, that was great. I started 15th and I had to fall back to 24th and then I finished, at, actually I finished second but there was an accident behind and then uh, they gave the results according to the uh, previous lap. So although I was second, I was given third and that was one of the best races in my life. But every race I enjoyed because I do it with 100% uh, how do you say, uh, dedication. dedication, faith, you know. So every race I remember what I want because uh, is uh, because people don't understand. Uh, I have raised the flag 200 times around the world. So I have like 200 podiums and the national anthem was played 60 times around the world in the best countries. And unfortunately, uh, there's no support, you know, no sponsors, nothing. But still, as I told you, I do all this for my self-satisfaction and I think uh, I have more to do. and. Uh, my intention is to win the World Championship at least thrice for Sri Lanka. And I'm always proud to carry the Sri Lankan flag. Whatever uh, people say or they didn't support me, I still think I, that uh, the biggest um, advantage for me is the love that I get from the Sri Lankans. So uh, that's why on my car I have my main sponsor is Humble Sri Lankans. And in 2016, they all voted for me and I became the most popular sports person in Sri Lanka. That's why I said motorsports has a lot of... Uh, support and popularity so you know so i think uh, we are blessed to be born here and sir thank you very much for sharing your stories with us and i wish you all the very best for your upcoming tournaments and races as well i believe that you know everyone here in sri lanka are proud of you and they are hosting you as an idol as well especially for the young racers and all the enthusiasts out there again thank you very much and i believe the viewers who are watching this got something very inspirational out of you sir then thank you very much and that was our episode on gen xyz this week we will be back again next week with another topic or an issue based on the you just in case you couldn't watch us on air tonight you can always re-watch by catching us on our youtube channel youtube.com slash other than in english i'm suzanne chanali stay safe and have a good night